Natasha, all my life I've had this burning desire to understand the nature of reality, the human condition. And one of the questions that helps you focus is, what is the nature of personhood? What does it mean to be a person? You're working in transhumanism. So I'd like to understand a little bit of what that is and then how that affects what it means to be a person. Transhumanism is a philosophical worldview. It concerns advancing technologies and science that help improve the human condition, for example, help extend life, uh, consider the vulnerability and inflexibility of life, and to create longer and more sustainable life for persons. A person, according to transhumanism, is yourself, your identity, what makes you you, your psychological makeup, your brain's functioning, your sense of mind, your perceptions, all the elements of you as a individual. Personhood is, as far as transhumanism is concerned, takes a look at the continuity of persons over time. Mm -hmm. For example, what we will become in the coming years. So that continuity of who we are now as we live longer and through different substrates or platforms that we could exist within. Okay, so uh, it, it makes sense in terms of the, the definitions of continuity and the, the inner feeling of myself. Uh, but what happens when you start changing the, um, at least the outer accoutrements that we have? You changing body parts uh, or you um, uh, even think of more elaborate things of, of, of uh, uploading your brain. Or, what are, what, are, what are the sequence of things that could happen in transhumanism that would begin to at least change uh, aspects of our personhood? As humans, we're biological animals. In the future, we could evolve and become something other, something that is not exclusively biological and could exist in different types of substrates, for example, into computer or computational systems. So if we look at the person of transhuman over time, it's a transition of being human, animal, into becoming more mechanized, um, using different devices and technologies to augment ourselves and enhance ourselves, thus human enhancement. So here we're taking a look at the very beginnings of seeing this evolution occur through the devices that we hold on our bodies, such as a smartphone or an iOS or an Android, mm -hmm. the games that we play, different mechanisms and wearable technologies that not only help our communication, but also our transportation. As far as taking a look at augmenting the body for enhancement, there is therapeutic and selective enhancement. For therapeutic enhancement, the field of prosthetics offers enormous um, potential, and I think that answers your question more articulately, in looking at those who have lost limbs um, gain prosthetic parts, such as roboticized and artificial intelligence-driven mm -hmm. limbs that have haptic sensors and interconnect with the neurological functions of the brain. This gives a person who has lost a limb an opportunity to have a replacement part and actually feel mm -hmm. um, a, a heated cup of coffee or mm -hmm. a cool uh, mm -hmm. drink of lemonade with their hand. Same with legs. We're seeing more and more of this in athletes, for example, with the Olympics having prosthetic legs, for mm -hmm. example. So this is just the beginning of this uh, transhuman state and replacing body parts that are more durable, longer lasting, and possibly even more efficient than the biological parts. And certainly as technology develops, that will happen. But in none of these things are you really changing the person. Uh, no, you can change the, 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 the arms and the legs uh, to replace them and even to enhance them in some future technologies. But the inner person, the sense that I am me, the continuity that I feel, wouldn't change at all. I would feel I have more Still capacity. And if I had an injury, I could now be uh, uh, ha have it. Uh, yes, uh, with changed. the caveat that any experience that we have really deeply affects us. So, someone who has lost a limb, uh, be it in an accident or at war or through disease, has had an experience that alters his or her life. Right. So, indeed, they have a prosthetic part that doesn't change their sense of identity, their personhood over time, but it certainly gives them a different way of looking at their life, perhaps. Yeah, and, and that's a question of how much of your personhood is dependent upon your body image and your sense of self and as, as you develop. And, and would 
a, an increasing technological uh, transformation of the human body change the human sense of personality? As it begins, it doesn't seem like it would. It would just uh, give you more enhancement, but it's hard to know as that progresses forward. At this preliminary stage that we're at now, where we're mechanizing the body more and more and adding parts, you know, external devices, um, non-invasive devices, and also putting chips inside the body and altering different mm -hmm. organs mm -hmm. inside the body through transplants or implants, et cetera, that doesn't alter no. personhood per right, se. Right. But the more we um, engage in multiple environments, different realities, virtual reality, telepresence, um, maybe even hologram environments or communicating effectively into the metaverse like Second Life, for example, we're taking on different elements of persona. We take on names, identities, avatars, and that certainly is starting to affect how we deem ourselves in the biosphere, in this biological material world. In the virtual world, it's a different environment, so we couldn't help but change in ways. Mm -hmm. But I think that that's just like people going to out into space, for example, to the moon. They're having a different experience that is in a different environment based on zero G, for example. That's different than having gravity defined. And, and, that, and that makes sense that your environment always forms you. Different cultures yes. have different uh, experiences. It's the same type of thing. The question is, is there any fundamental difference that you can project as more and more body parts are become uh, non-biological as more and more of our life becomes virtual. Um, in the future, maybe our brain can be directly plugged into uh, computational devices in some way. And would any of those things begin to actually change the nature of personhood uh, as you have your own internal self-image? I think so as far as self-image is concerned because you think if we start enhancing our senses past what our preliminary senses are, mm -hmm. then we're going to have different attributes. We're going to see maybe a little bit deeper and farther here, a little bit longer, uh, greater velocity, amplitude. We're going to be able to smell uh, with our olfactory sense mm -hmm. things that we had no idea of what it was right. before, much like a dog. Mm -hmm. For example, when my dog is sniffing around, yeah. <laughs> what is he thinking? Yeah. I mean, he's so intense on smelling that I know there's got to be some image in right, his brain right. that he's interpreting from the molecules in the sense. Right. So if we Probably have these... feeling sorry for you that you can't smell it too. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Yeah. I don't know if I'd want to, frankly. <laughs> but, uh, but it's interesting because we think of uh, our senses help make us who we are. They certainly help form our perceptions, thus our identity. So if we increase our sens sensory capabilities, um, for example, with sense in Asia, no matter what it is that we do with our senses in altering them to enhance them in ways that are very productive for our level of understanding and compassion, empathy, insight, foresight, hindsight, etc., it's got to affect us in some way as far as our mm. ability to um, cogitate over who we are and why, what we're doing here and what our purpose in life is. It's got to have some element there that I can't define yet, but I know that the more I'm aware, um, the more I want to become aware and then I'm starting to notice things that I hadn't mm. noticed before. You know, and that's, it's a kind of a mood altering existence that we're going to be experiencing more and more with virtual reality and uploading and metaverse and um, uh, immersive design and enhanced design with enhanced reality, for example.